Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's the last show of the year that I'll be doing. I'll be going away on holiday for a couple of weeks to try and recharge the batteries so that we can come back and hit 2013 with all we got. Now, it is December 22nd in New Zealand today and December 21st in the United States, so it's not the end of the world. Come on. Imagine how many people have been caught up by this, you know, how many people are now uh, living in these tsunami proof domes and some 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 beachside community with with uh, uh, 75 years of dried food and medical supplies and things like holed up in the, in the mountains somewhere like living in fracking Hobbiton. Uh, you know what I was doing in preparation for 2012? I ensured that I had a bottle of liquor and that was about it. Because I knew that at most, this 2012 phenomenon would last overnight, and I'd want to not be terribly sober for it because of the massive letdown. You know, you either got people who are fancifully believing logical fallacies, believing that some alien race of of, uh, higher beings is somehow just going to turn up and save all our asses, or you got some other kind of logical fallacy believing people Who thinks something else is going to happen and come up and destroy all our ass? I mean, stupid, man. You know, I can even just think back about how much time I have spent thinking about 2012, talking about 2012, reading about 2012, watching videos and movies and, and, and things of this nature. Obsessing over it. All a waste of time. If... You don't recognise what a PSYOP looks like. And now I do. And hopefully I won't be caught by that kind of crap again. Did anybody else believe that they were actually going to die? You know? Anybody? Anybody at all? I could... I must admit, there was a tiny little inkling in the back of my mind just going, you know, we might be all screwed here. But how is that different from any other day? It really isn't. Understand this. Caller lines are open. Um, not for me, though. For some reason, I can't seem to get it working. So on this last day, we would like to hear from people. <laughs> Nobody's giving out or call in. And, and, and you know, um, what, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, last night we had the uh, December 21st party here, you know, end of the world party, etc. You know, virtually nobody turned up. It's indicative, isn't it? You know, it's just me, a couple of listeners, uh, sitting around, talking, having a few drinks. Uh, it, that's the that's the amount of uh, people I expect. In fact, more people than I expected showed up. I didn't expect anybody to turn up because it's such a non-event. <laughs> and people, oh, because so many people, so many people over the years tell me all these things about this very special and wonderful day that's go that is so sure to happen so sure to happen that they're willing to change their entire life course because of something else somebody else said that I never checked up on really you know we had uh, Jan Irvin on the dark occulted mysticism show last night and he has uh, deduced uh, from talking to people who've actually studied the real Mayan calendar and all of its predictions and and, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, there was actually only one prediction in there at all. One thing was uh, uh, certain predicted by the Mayans, and that was the the crowning of a new king of some kind. That's it. No tsunamis, no volcanoes, no earthquakes. No global war. And the reason why the Mayan calendar is in a circle is because it keeps going after it reaches a certain point. This is simply the renewal. We're going into the um, the, the exact same repetitive phase of some kind of celestial events, you know? And, and it'll surely line up with all the moon alignments and everything like that. It's just mathematically perfected. So, worst thing that can happen... I mean, I mean look at it this way you got a theory here, you got a circle, and it, and it rolls, like a tyre. So, 
does somehow the universe change if a tire rotates 360 degrees or does it just keep rolling as as you're going down the freeway it just keeps rolling I don't understand why people this ignorance has, has, has been uh, uh, kept up by this. Believe me when I tell you that anybody who's saying that something is going to happen and it's a uh, it's a natural event or, or, or something of that nature and they don't produce like real documented evidence to it like if it's it does this like, for example how many times have you heard uh, different numbers for how long this rotational cycle of the Mayan calendar takes? On the movie 2012, it said 640,000 years. Uh, David Wilcock, I think he said 65 million years. Or uh, I had some people last night say it was 13,000 years. Another person say it was like uh, 3,500 years. <laughs> They don't know. They don't know. If you don't really know, then it ain't really going to happen. The problem is people will just keep believing in this date type thing until the date arrives and then passes without incident before they start believing otherwise. It's still in the back of their mind just going, mm, oh, it might end, it might end. Like my sister Janine, for example, she uh, refused, absolutely refused to pay her credit cards off and to, uh, uh, start paying her credit cards off until December 21st, 2012. <laughs> or or uh, other people might be, I don't know, quitting smoking or, or whatever. It's, it's just basically a day like any other day, you know? New Year's Eve or, or Easter or Christmas or, or Thanksgiving. These are only really any other days. What, what matters is the way people treat them. And you know what I saw when I was looking over the city last night from the, from the driveway and, and all this kind of stuff, of looking for things over the thing? I mean, we heard a succession number of loud bangs in the air, probably fireworks of some kind. Somebody let off maybe, I don't know, I think maybe 10 fireworks? It was just bang, 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 and then it was over? Right? This is the massive fanfare. This is the uh, uh, huge consciousness shift. Nothing's changed. Nothing. I got up on 21st of December 2012 here in New Zealand. Oh, it's overcast. It's a mild temperature and there's a slight breeze blowing. Doesn't sound like the end of the fracking world to me. This is just insane. I don't know. Why am I keeping on talking about it? You know, to be honest, how big an industry has been brought up around this 2012 phenomenon? And I, I'm, I've, I think I've got a couple of DVDs and books on my shelf there um, uh, from people with just this topic material. You know, just this 2012 consciousness shift, earth changes, yada, yada. All right, and they're all 100% wrong. Okay? You know, I know, because it's December 21st and nothing they said would happen has happened. So suddenly none of these people have any credibility whatsoever. I've maintained for a long time that it was just a big fat psyop. You know, barely even worth paying attention to. And and, and time has proven to be correct. What people don't talk about is the other things that are going on. The things in reality. Um, oh, well, uh, no, 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 I can't say that. If, have, you, have you noticed so many people... So many people with radio shows and blogs and YouTube channels make this claim. Nobody else talks about this. L like, as if they've talked to everybody to make sure that they're not talking about it <coughs> first before making such a claim. <laughs> no. Heaps of people have been talking about this. The uh, Federal Reserve, 99 years ago, roughly out by a few days or so. The Federal Reserve Act in 1913 was passed on Christmas Eve when very few people who were elected were actually in that house to pass the legislation. And then they passed it, and the US dollar gets devalued 97% plus. And now... 
this Christmas Eve, just after this coming weekend. That 99-year lease is up for review. That's the 2012 thing that people should be concerned about. Another 100-year reign of the Federal Reserve? Now that's a scary proposition. You know? Instead of getting some giant tsunami washing over, you get a tsunami of dead. Of currency backed by nothing. Speaking of currency backed by nothing, I'm feeling kind of tired today. I've been working really hard all year. For the whole year. And uh, just exhausted and kind of run out of things to really say and do and talk about. So I would really appreciate it. If you've been listening to the show at any at any real point, just so give us a call. 218-339-8525. Please, ring on in. I want to find out what uh, other people were doing on December 21st, 2012, or what they think about this massive PSYOP, and, and perhaps how it's been used as a cover to mask other things that are going on. And what I find interesting is the media was particularly silent about this. You know, didn't see a whole lot of news stories floating around on mainstream media about December 21st, 2012, considering how close we've, we were coming up to it. You know, it was just not even mentioned. I, I, I didn't hear it once mentioned. I just completely ignored it. And, I th- and, and uh, in retrospect, for very good reason, because nothing's happening. OK, why would you report on something that, that isn't going to happen? Well... Maybe they just wanted to keep people in suspense. You know? Sit around, not knowing whether or not the world's going to end. One of the um, uh, listeners, Rob, was around here last night, twittering on his phone, looking, reading these forums at Godlike Productions, people saying that half the world is bathed in darkness. And I said, yeah, that's because it's a globe, and half of it has sun and half of it has night at all times. You freaking... <laughs> Gonna be kidding me. People saying, "Oh, it's uh, it's six thirty a.m. here in Dublin, and the sun should have come up long time ago." You know, people are just making stuff up. Literally, this whole phenomenon has just been about a bunch of people making stuff up without knowing what they're talking about and making connections where there aren't none. And 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 and. <sighs> Fear paradigms. Here's the other thing. What I've deduced is that the New World Order is behind a lot of this. Okay? And and some of the other people that are commenting about the 2012 shift and, and, and all of that. I mean, I, I know that many of these people. They're like my friends, confidants, etc. But it doesn't change the fact that they're very, very wrong. Okay? I've been very, very wrong before. I admit it. Everybody else has to start admitting it too. If you have ever, ever, ever started telling people that December 2012 is definitely going to be a consciousness shift or definitely going to be some kind of disaster and then here it is on the fracking day and you're going to like push back the time like, you know what was happening last night on December 21st, 2012 in New Zealand? They're like, oh, it didn't happen in the morning. Okay, so it must be happening at 11 o'clock. Or it, it didn't happen at 11 o'clock, so it must be happening at, at, uh, at, at midnight US Eastern Standard Time or some shit. You know, they just keep pushing it back, pushing it back. Like some priest who has foreseed, who has prophesied that there's going to be a massive drought and a massive flood. And unless you give me all your gold and all your virgins and all your ears and trust to, in order to rule over you, you will be dead. Okay? He's coming back to save us, and only I, the one with all the golden virgins, will be able to access it. This kind of rhetoric has been happening for, gosh dang, forever. People have always been trying to manipulate the fear process and paradigm. Always trying to make people look the other way while they're stealing stuff out of their pockets. I mean, just imagine... The mass distraction that's, ha- that's happened. Mass distraction of all fracking kinds so unbelievably strong and ridiculous that it makes the mind real. Why? Have we 
got some kind of a sick fetish with the with the end of the world? How many zombie movies? How many disaster movies? How many alien invasion, blow up, transhumanist, post-apocalyptic future movies do we do we need to see before we realise that we're getting sucked in by our fears and, and, and our paradoxical reasoning that, that, that looking at horrible things happening to other people somehow makes us feel better and entertained? You know, we're really obsessed with it. There's death everywhere. Everywhere. All, all the media is soaked with it. If you're ever watching even entertainment, murder all over the place. News, murder all over the place. The radio with the same news and the same entertainment, murder all over the place. Maybe a music channel or something like that will will talk about, you know, macking wenches and, 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 and buying 22-inch rims for, for, your, for your giant Federal Reserve-funded fracking Hummer that you can drive through a carbon tax regime checkpoint with. We'll be right back after the break at the Vinnie Eastwood Show.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You listen to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live from New Zealand. There's about eight different countries tuning in right now on the American Freedom Radio streams. You know, we're from Germany and Britain and Ireland and all sorts of other places. Even Argentina. I love that South American f- uh, flavor. Okay. <clears throat> December 21st, 2012. You know what? Frack it. I almost don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Who cares? This is the end of it. I actually had the same for a long time. Don't worry. It's just the end of the world. I have not worried about this kind of an iota. I've wondered about it. And thought, could it be true? Nah, probably not. You know, you have a look at the ag- objectives and agendas, and it's like, hmm, how is this going to make people act? Is it going to make people act uh, fearful and concerned and retract and stop being involved in their community, stop protesting because it's, the, it's not worth it and everything's going to end anyway? Well, yes, yes, it might. And what are the potential benefits from this? Well, uh, you can't really see any. The only uh, people who think that it's positive uh, believe that they, I, I, I don't know. That instead of uh, earth changes and, th- and things like that, we're suddenly going to evolve into uh, fifth dimensional beings. You know the difference between the dimensions, don't you? One D, little straight line. It's just got width or it's got height. Two D, got width and height. You know, so we picture it in front of you. Three D, it's got width, height, width, height and depth. Four D, it's all that plus time. You know, an object in time and space. And there's some people who believe that we'd uh, evolve into fifth dimensional beings, where suddenly time and space would become irrelevant and we'd experience them all simultaneously in some kind of transcendental meditation technique. Come on! I don't want to offend anybody, but come on! Jeepers creepers! How fracking stupid are we? And the answer is very... <laughs> I include myself in this. I'm so dumb. Oh my god. I saw some of the tests that they were giving to uh, seven-year-olds in, 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 in like the 1800s or something like that. I couldn't even answer like maybe one or half of one of the questions. We are so fracking dumb. We are so easily manipulated. It's what we've were, what were basically been... Moulded into over time. Hmm. How can we make an incredibly stupid, unhealthy population that doesn't really care about anything and will believe pretty much anything that they hear so that they're easily manipulated? Ah, I got an idea. How about we have government? Yeah, that's a good move. How about the government take over the media? That's an even better move. How about we toxify them at birth with like an umpteen thousand vaccines shot into their arm? Well, that's a good idea too. But how do you convince everybody to do all the stuff that's bad for them? Well, we'll just tell them it's good for them. Oh, okay, sweet ass. The police are here to protect you. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. They, frick, they fracking cause half the crime. And let the other half go. It's insane. Every single institution that we've ever been born into trusting serves only to further enslave us 
and further dumb us down. And I am so sick of establishments of all kinds. Every single time when I switch on the television, every single time when I see some suit-wearing individual practicing his varying branches of scumbaggery, it irks me in such a way that makes me boil inside as if I'm being tortured by my own fracking consciousness. Because when you see and know what's really being said, I sort of listen to this radio broadcast just a few days ago. And you know buzzwords, right? These little catchphrases that they put all through the media in order to connote certain positive elements that they instead apply to tyrannical things. Climate change. Carbon tax. Global governance. Safe and effective. Safety standards. International standards. All these little words that sound so nice. But to a man like me, that man could have been saying, You know, in, in, some, in some kind of crazed, tyrannical dialect. Pumping fists in the air and such dressed in a military uniform for all I know. That's what it sounds like whenever I listen to any of these media talking heads and these stupid people that they have all over the airways spraying lies into people's ears. I see nothing but a would-be tyrannical dictator mini-fracking Hitler who has no interest in the public good and only has interest to satisfy the banks and the corporate interests and all the stupid things that they are led to believe. You would be surprised if not dismayed at what people will believe. It's extraordinary. How easy is it, on the other hand, to break free from this? When you start learning about lies in the media, and you suddenly start seeing them everywhere, you know, you've uh, never seen this person before, and suddenly one day introdu somebody introduces you to them and you start seeing that person everywhere. It's like that. Except, you're completely surrounded at all times by it. There is no escape. Maybe some people turn to meditation in order to escape that. Me, me personally, I don't favour meditation, like, really in any way. I've never accomplished a heck of a lot with my eyes closed, to tell you the truth. I choose to spend my time with my eyes open. Looking and doing things. Rather than looking inside. Because you find if you do things... You learn a lot, a lot of things about your insides anyway. You, you just accomplish a heck of a lot more in the process. I had this vision of a world so dark, so cold, so ruthless, so despicable, that at first I refused to believe that it could even possibly exist. Then the realization hit me. We are not just researching plots of a storyline here. When we talk about global genocide, when we talk about vaccines, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and the banksters, it becomes very real. And the tyranny is absolutely in your face. At all times, they never stop releasing new viruses. They never stop implementing new financial crises. They never stop introducing new biotoxins and chemical sprays into your midst. They never, ever stop. Just to have that realization, in and of itself, is one of the most depressing things people will ever go through. Half the reason why I did this radio show is therapy for myself. If I couldn't laugh about all these terrible things, terrible, horrible, no good, very bad things that rush through my skull and brain places on a daily, 
minutely and secondly basis, I would go absolutely, unequivocally, insane, beyond all recognition, I would not be myself anymore. Just because we're being lied to, just because we're being exterminated, doesn't mean you can't have a good sense of humour about it. You ever seen the movie Life is Beautiful? About uh, Italian Jews going into a work camp and the father plays a game with his son and tries to make him think that this work camp is really just an elaborate game scenario so that he doesn't realise how horrible they've got it? Think about trauma surgeons. You know, mate, you have not suffered and lived until you have been around the many people who suffer and die around you. And these people have to develop a very dark, very sick and perverse sense of humour to simply cope with the everyday things that they see. I don't believe that it is possible to survive without laughing about the, the bad things that you see, making light of them. There's a part of our brain that doesn't want to admit that bad things are going on. I don't think that part of the brain is a bad thing at all. I think it protects us from the things that we can't do anything about. And if you're always focusing on these bad international things that are going on, like would, how many of us were involved with these school shootings that we're all talking about and spending so much of our time on? None. How much of us were, well, instead of perhaps, I don't know, creating a business opportunity for yourself or another source of income, were instead uh, listening to the radio or watching TV, furiously trying to gather more information. And by the time comes tomorrow, you say, yes, I'm going to start doing that new thing. I'm going to start improving my life. I'm going to start taking action. The little back part of your mind says, no, 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 no. Listen to some more information, bro. Listen to some more of it. You know, there might be something you've missed. When you go out, you might not do it perfect or whatever. That little voice is the one that stops you from being who you are. Stops you from doing what you're meant to be doing. Don't listen to that one. No, not all the time anyway. <laughs> it's excruciating. The mental trauma, simply knowing about bad things, isn't it? Many of us have suffered uh, depression, fights with the families, fights with your friends, a lot of relationship doors close. And if you're onto it, though, a lot of relationship doors open. It's also very nice and, and uh, comforting to know that there's somebody else like me out there who's talking about the same kind of things as I am, who's on the same wavelength. You know, there's he heaps of uh, hosts on AmericanFreedomRadio.com you can listen to besides me, who, in, uh, in my opinion, are, are extraordinary in their own right. Beyond question. So the fact that anybody listens to me at all when they have so much other choice out there is quite humbling. And I don't think that I deserve it. I mean, I work really hard and, and all of that kind of thing, but I don't really have a whole lot of life experience. I don't have no PhDs, no MDs, no nothing. Everything that I say could be wiffle. It could be complete naivete. My age is no barrier, but I think this is the same of really everybody. Everybody says what they think, and half the time, what they think is wrong. It depends whether or not they admit that they're wrong later on. Hate people like that. You know, we were watching, uh, on the festive occasion, the movie 2012 last night, and one of the main characters was having a conversation with the president in the Oval Office, about how the world was destabilizing and much faster than he predicted. I'm sorry, Pres Mr. President, he said. I was wrong. The president looks to his aide and he says, Do you know how many times I've heard those words in this office? Zero. 
That's the problem with the administration, isn't it? Nobody really cares if they're wrong. They just want to keep doing it. They must receive some benefit. You hear all this time on this planet, and most of it, we spend fulfilling the bidding of people who don't care about us. I think that's intensely sad, and in, in, in the level of betrayal, especially when you're betrayed from within, from people who taught you to trust them, who indoctrinated you, who educated you, who clothed you, who fed you, your whole life, in the McDonald's as a kid, when you're doing the little birthday parties with the little hats and such. All the way up through the uh, aluminium containing deodorants and sunscreen that you slop on yourself as a uh, as a young person trying to keep yourself young and clean and prosperous and things like that, only to later on develop Al- Alzheimer's or some other kind of debilitating uh, 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 party-based disease. <clears throat> All our trust has been totally violated. And some people make the mistake that they should then stop trusting anybody. That's, I don't think that's right, man. Your life really becomes quite empty if you don't trust anybody. Just don't trust massive institutions that you don't know anything about. You know, if you know somebody pretty well and they've been a good a, a good person to you or, or, or whatever, don't just suddenly shrug them off because they don't believe 9 eleven's an inside job. Be a little bit more accepting. It's 2012 after all. We'll be right back at the com. Welcome back, everybody. Final segment of the first hour here. The call-in number is 218-339-8525. That's 218-339-8525. I'm trying to attempt to use my radio voice. Because normally my voice sounds like this. But when I do my radio voice, it sounds like this. When we're trying to... (laughs) I'm sorry. Trying to be serious is quite a difficulty for me. Because... Everything's so fracking silly. I say go with the silliness. Make lame jokes and crappy puns. Just enjoy every single opportunity that you get. Heck, the opportunity ain't going to come around again anytime soon, really, is it? You know, you got something better to do than enjoy yourself? To live life? <laughs> you know, please explain to me what this is. And how can I get some? I don't know what everybody's trying to do. I know what I'm trying to do. I'm pretty sure that I'm failing at it. Trying to give a platform to... Uh, not the masses, really. Don't take calls um, a terribly large amount on this show, and for that I apologise. But for activists, authors, researchers, politicians, things like that, who've got controversial messages that the mainstream media probably should be covering in order to have some form of an open dialogue about the reality of what is happening inside our nations in this world across all manner of concerns, whether they be uh, far on the censorship list, like chemtrails, harp, police state, underground military bases, that kind of thing. To those which are everyday uh, incidents for which very little information is really given on. Environmental aspects, for example, there's an enormous amount of environmental hazards that are simply being overlooked at pretty much all times because of their grave consequences, and it's usually just a couple of people who are doing the job, not for the money, not for the fame, not for the recognition, but simply because it's the right thing to do to expose, talk about, and attempt to inform other people. The difficulty being that you have only so many hours in the day. This is something I've started to notice for uh, my purposes here on this radio show. So only so many hours in the day, and what all these other people are doing is they're spending so many of those hours researching, documenting, creating new content for which they can talk about on air, But they don't have the time to record these things, to document them, to publish them on YouTube and those sorts of uh, time constraints. Or if perhaps it's a new technology and they they, uh, don't have the time to learn how to use it or just don't want to or whatever. They're still doing good work, 
but they don't have the ability to get the message out uh, all by their lonesome. That's really the purpose of the show. So we do the work that the activists can't do for themselves. We try to give them the coverage and the recognition that they do deserve. I believe these people do deserve recognition. I believe they deserve far more recognition than a Nobel Peace Prize winning Barack H. Obama. He's a puppet. He's irrelevant. Almost want to shy away from all of these things that you hear in the mainstream media because it's not worth my time even going into Simply reading out a mainstream media article online takes a whole hour because of the expansion of, into the things that they have missed or deliberately not covered. This is the kind of information. Long form, you know, you want to talk to somebody for an hour, two hours. Get their story down. At least listen to them. Even if you disagree with them, you can find points that you agree with on everybody. To this date, I've only met maybe one or two people who think that the New World Order is actually a good thing. You know, these are people who know that 9 is an inside job. These are people who know about the uh, population reduction protocols. These are people who have uh, campaigned to expose these things and are now retracting and thinking that, in fact, what the Illuminati is trying to do is a good thing, but they're just going about it the wrong way. Same kind of excuse communists give you. Oh, Stalin was trying to accomplish something good. He just went about it the wrong way. Exterminating people en masse is not just going about it the wrong way. Okay? That's the whole point of it. If the major consequences of a political campaign is the extermination of a people, then I would absolutely, assuredly bet you that that was the whole point of their political campaign to start with that just didn't tell you about it until after they took your guns when you couldn't defend yourself. As happens with every major tyranny that has ever exterminated a large portion of their own population throughout history. And so Sandy... What is this? Sandy Hook? Sounds like some kind of a Peter Pan villain. And incidentally, there's some kind of a great... Barack Obama-shaped crocodile swimming in and about to snap your guns and do a wee little death roll. I fear for the future of the United States. I really do. It has nothing to do with some no date or consequences or galactic alignment. It has to do with a comprehensive and logistical analysis of where the country is currently at. And what has happened to other countries in the world who have been in similar situations before? History repeats itself oh so many times that predicting the future is seeming to get easier and easier. And many of these predictions for the future aren't predictions at all. They are planned agendas. To fight against a planned agenda is much easier than fighting against something that is made up that you have little information on, like the uh, 2012 phenomenon. Non-phenomenon. It puts the non in phenomenon. That's what 2012 does. And a whole lot of people, they could be focusing in other areas. They could be going to their city council meetings. I can't tell you how many times. Seen the city council meeting, and how frightened... They are. By somebody with a camera? By somebody with as simple as a pencil and a notepad. Sitting there, listening to the local council meeting go on, taking notes. They get those people thrown out. Barely anybody even uh, turns up to these council meetings. Fewer more take any form of record. You should be those people. If you know that something's going on and you make excuses to say, oh, but, you know, there's a James Bond marathon on TNT and that's your excuse to not go out and save your fracking city, your country, heaven help you. You know, you're going to take personal responsibility for the terrible things you see around you. Otherwise, you're going to wind up assuming the responsibility of inaction. And you can ignore the consequences of reality, 
but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. You know? There's always some kind of kickback if you do nothing. Doing nothing is a choice. If you do if you're not standing in the way of the bulldozers that are crushing Palestinian homes as we speak, then you're not doing enough, according to some people. It's a multifaceted war. I don't think everybody can host a radio show or get in front of a dozer blade. There's certain people who are hardcore enough, who have suffered through extraordinary trauma in their life, that instead of crippling them, has toughened them up, has made them capable of dealing with enormous amounts of sleep deprivation, stress, fear of bodily harm, fear of assassination, wariness of surveillance. These people are strong and they're the best people to talk to on radio. Because often, they've got a very healthy attitude about life. Because they live right on the very edge of it. Many of us are in a comfort zone. I, I include myself in this. And I think I need to start breaching it a bit more. If you start to stagnate, I'm going to start to get more uncomfortable. And I'm going to go out and seek ways to stir things up. To m cause trouble. To make something bad happen to me. So that I can grow and evolve from it. So that I don't stagnate. And become the same person tomorrow as I am today. Not keen bro. Not keen. That's inaction at its worst. If you refuse to improve yourself. Simply because it's more comfortable to do the same thing you do. Every single day. It's a waste of life. You don't find out what you're capable of until you find out what you're not capable of. You know what I'm saying? Go out there, try something real hardcore, try and run a marathon, have a heart attack halfway. Yep, not capable of doing that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Life's funny. It's funny like that. That's why you're going to learn to laugh at it. How else are you, you going to make it out alive, you know? How many times... Have you been stuck in traffic or something like that? And you feel uncomfortable or it's hot or sweaty or something like that and you're stressed and you just wish that time would go faster so you don't have to be stuck right here where you are? And you know that even if you get off the freeway and you take back streets, it'll take you just as long to get home. So you feel trapped and you refuse to do anything. And then the next day you get in traffic and you, and you do it all over again. You think, man, there's got to be a better way. There has to be. We weren't meant to live like this. We weren't meant to be caged or work in cubicles or take the stairs into skyscrapers or any of that kind of stuff, man. We should be on the land. We should be with our friends. We should be with our family. We should be in touch. We should be connected instead of alone and miserable. Due to our enslavement. We'll be right back at the VinnieEastwoodShow.com. Ladies and gentlemen, to hour number two of the fastest two hours in talk radio. It's the Vinnie Eastwood Show. Broadcasting live from AmericanFreedomRadio.com. And incidentally, the VinnieEastwoodShow.com. I've been upgrading the archives and making sure everybody's got videos and uh, ad-free archives and things like that. All available on the same page and... You know, just looking back on 2012, man, there's some kind of really amazing people. Just a couple of days ago, um, I think this may be the third time on the show, Andrew Bashago, the uh, time traveler dude, you know, talking about Project Pegasus, CIA, DARPA, sending kids back through time into alternate realities who experienced all, all sorts of different stuff, jump rooms, teleportation, man, that stuff is fascinating. You get so many people. You get authors, and uh, uh, we even had uh, Ron Ignos dude talking about uh, Columbine shootings and the uh, the cover-ups. 
how the kids who committed the Columbine shootings were raped by the sheriff who was actually in charge of the investigation into the Columbine shootings. <laughs> and uh, then we had a lot of Christians on, you know, we had a pastor Stephen Anderson that wrote a, a book about, oh sorry, doing a documentary with uh, Free Your Mind Films, um, my good bros Chris Maple and Paul Wittenberger about how 2012 is going to be a non-event. In fact, should probably add them on the show today. Guess it is a non-event in that case. And uh, John Perkins, the economic hitman, pretty incredible dude. And uh, during that interview, he gave me some of the biggest compliment I've probably ever received in uh, in talk radio. He said, that Vinny, there's a lot of people doing this, but you're the best. I was like, whoa, that's a bit much. Hopefully he was just humouring me, otherwise my humorous might grow. Hubris, should I say. And Martin Dutre, a good New Zealand archaeologist, he's a dude who has discovered a whole bunch of different things about uh, New Zealand's ancient cultures and these old uh, uh, sighting points uh, for winter and summer solstices and things of that nature, which the ancient peoples before uh, Māori arrived here used to use in order to keep their uh, their sun cycles and uh, moon cycles and all of that kind of stuff and check no when to plant their crops. The guy's been demonised to no end, so it's pretty interesting. He's been on Red Ice Radio as well. He had uh, Douglas Dietrich, dude who um, used to work for the Department of Defence as a librarian. That's some scary stuff, man. Talking about some sense of military history or what? <laughs> you know, there's this uh, scary phenomenon, oh, excuse me, of uh, bioweapons being used by the Japanese, and apparently the Japanese actually won uh, the Second World War and have been uh, dominating ever since, according to uh, uh, records in the Department of Defense, and to stand down to them. You know, crazy. It just it just messes with your reality. It's another thing that I find really fun about this job, is you get to talk with people every day that mess your head up. <laughs> it's actually it's actually quite a thrill. Uh, and of course, I participate on so many other shows as well. And I wanna I wanna give special mention uh, to both Charlie McGrath and uh, Karen Tostado. Uh, over at uh, Wide Awake News and uh, United We Strike. They've uh, really been uh, good and uh, supportive uh, to me, um, given me plenty of radio time on their shows and that sort of thing. And we've brought them on these, this show many times as well. It's a, it's a great working relationship with people who are on uh, different networks. It was kind of part of the reason why I founded the the Vinnie Eastwood Radio Alliance because I've been on so many people's shows and over a hundred at least and I wanted to create a little space uh, online where all us different radio show hosts can share guest information or help each other out or if we've got some if we want to do the rounds or or meet each other and talk or come on other each other's shows and things of that nature you know we're, we're all in it for the truth really and if you're spreading yourself out all over the place, many people will uh, hear you, with, whereas they wouldn't have possibly heard you before. And more to the point, if you bring somebody else over onto your show, you might have uh, some of your listeners who like their stuff as well going on and listening to them. It's a, it's a reciprocal thing, you know? There's a lot of collaboration involved with Truth of Talk Radio that's just fantastic. You get to talk to the coolest people. The coolest people, man, who got really big names and great backgrounds and, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, you're talking behind the scenes and, you, and you, uh, you're joking around and uh, you're just ordinary people. That's what we all are. We're just ordinary people who've just freaking had enough. Oh, gosh. Speaking of people who've had enough, Freighter X, um, my co-host for the Dark Occulted Mysticism show, if you haven't listened to an episode of the Dark Occulted Mysticism show yet, you can Google the Dark Occulted Mysticism show, and a number of YouTube clips should come up there, and they're also available on the uh, archives page 
of the Vinnie Eastwood Show dot com and either the uh, Vinnie on other shows page, that kind of thing. But googling um, will help. And uh, Freda co-hosts this with me, and we have on um, other dark occulted mystics. You know, we've had James Wright talking about the Scottish Rite and the thirty third degree uh, Supreme Council. We've had uh, Mark Passio from uh, What on Earth Is Happening dot com. Last night we had uh, Jan Irvin. Uh, of of Gnostic media, so we're we're getting some um, some good names on there. I think even uh, Freeman has done a done a show with us. So it's it's a whole lot of fun, and um, it's we prefer to do it all via webcam. So you've got uh, the videos of uh, myself and Freda, as well as um, our guest, whoever it happens to be. So it's a bit bit of a higher uh, production quality. You know, I, I thought that was really fun to do, and. Uh, I think it's because it's it's sort of unique. It's we really do want some kind of uh, TV show. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I mean that that's what everybody really wants. They want the nice studio, the the TV show, and all of that kind of thing. And I, I've just decided, well, I don't need any of that stuff in order to make a TV show. I've got a Skype recorder that records the video of all these different people. I've got a uh, some other form of account. It's all it's all good. We can make it happen, and we do, with as little minimal resources, which many people contribute to. Speaking of contributors, we have a caller on the line here, I believe that is Kathy in California. How are you, sweetheart? Hi, how are you, sweetie? Somewhat Hope fabulous. you're having a good day. Yeah. Yeah, I just got to talk to Mitch and uh, see if I, everything's going better for you this week. Yeah. And I wanted to say uh, we enjoy your show. Thank and, you. And uh, that's all. <laughs> I don't know if you if you heard the uh, Connecticut. Uh, this was on Joe Joseph's show the other night. I think it was Thursday night show. Um, no, it must have been Wednesday. He had only an hour to go or something. Anyway, it was on one of these. It was a Wednesday night show. He said that uh, there was a cop in Connecticut said that anybody, you know, like the inter- uh, the internet, basically, because it wouldn't be mainstream media, right? Uh, putting out any information about the shooting other than what the official report says can be held with criminal stuff. And I thought, that's nice. So much for our First Amendment, right? Well, I talked to Zen Gardner yesterday, Kathy, and he had uh, his Google advertisements pulled off his website because he published an article with alternative theories about what happened in the uh, shooting. Yeah. And I sent, um, what was it? Vinny sent me some, I mean, Mitch sent me something, and then I, I did more research into that, and it's, it really goes all the way back. I was listening to, um, I'm trying to find it to send to Mitch for him to listen to, but I, it was endthelive.com. Yeah. It said that it goes all the way back to the Tucson shooting also, it, Aurora along with the Tucson shooting. It's uh, how they're all tied together some way or another. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting. Um, her husband, U.S. husband, worked for NASA. Um, the Aurora shooting uh, and the guy, the shooting that's involved in Connecticut, they're both uh, uh, in, he was the guy in Connecticut, the father of the dead boy. No, uh, no let's see. Uh, I guess, I forget how that goes. He's the, anyway, he's, he's tied to uh, GE and he he and the father of the shooter at Aurora are tied together uh, in another outfit. And I forget what the name of it is called. Unfortunately, I'm not. My memory is not very good. It's like L I B O L or something, some corporation. And it goes to derivatives and I don't know all kinds of stuff that they're involved in. And I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting that uh, these guys are linked to, to one another, you know? So there's more behind this picture than we know. And we'll probably never know the whole story, but... 
we do know it's a tax to get our guns. That that much we do know. And yeah, uh, yeah. I think the detail. I think the details become irrelevant after you realise what the enemy objective is. If the enemy objective is to get your guns, that's all you need to know. Yeah, that's the that's the objective. Yeah. Mm. And uh, well, like I've always said, you know, our guns don't mean anything anyway compared to what they have. I mean, if they have a cannon, we're supposed to have a cannon. That's how the forefathers meant it, you know. You know, the, the right to bear arms. They didn't say what kind of arms, just arms, you know. We should be able to carry anything. Well, it's, it was, I, I think it was um, some f- particular reference in the Second Amendment to a well-regulated militia. If you were a man from the age of 17 to 34, I believe, you were... Um, at any point could be either uh, deputized by a local sheriff or you could be inducted into a uh, militia in order to defend the country, either from enemies from without or within. And uh, they're meant to have uh, rifles and uh, any any form of uh, ammunition or uh, armaments they they really could afford or, or wanted, but it was uh, not entirely... I'm not I'm not 100% sure on this but if you have a look at say Switzerland firearms are basically mandatory everybody got some machine gun in their house everybody you know how many burglaries you know there are you know how many burglaries there were in Switzerland last year zero probably none <laughs> all right you know a whole country not a single home invasion because every criminal knows that if you go into somebody's house they are guaranteed to be capable of killing you if you go into some old lady's house and she's got nothing but a phone to protect her, you're going to not think twice about that. Right. And you know why that happens in Switzerland? That's where the Vatican Bank is. Think about it. Well, um, actually, it's because country- the Swiss the Swiss Army, you know how, the, how you've got the Swiss Army knife, um, they have no um, formal uh, regiment militia type structure, like no full-time soldiers. Everybody's simply required to put in a certain amount of service every year, and the service is tailored to your age and physical condition. For example, if you're a, a, a bit older, you'll, you'll do uh, uh, cooking or uh, cleaning or, or, or some, some sort of uh, remedial task that's more suited to your physical condition, whereas when you're young, you're required to keep physically fit, and you do uh, training every year. And the reason why there's a submachine gun in everybody's house is because uh, the military can simply be called to arms because everybody's unofficially a part of it just as soon as they get invaded they blow every bridge and they stage a guerrilla war okay and no country's ever invaded them the Nichols you know guys that were supposed to be behind the Timmy McVeigh thing and William Cooper they were all part of a militia and they got all got taken out. That's exactly what happened there. Yeah. Um, I believe Timothy McVeigh could still be alive if they haven't killed him. Where they would have killed him would have been Australia, because after he supposedly got executed, which he didn't, uh, they moved him to Australia. And they, they uh, moved him to Australia. Been, yeah, he did not die. He did, by injection. They put the needle in his toe. Witnesses said he was still breathing. And that was on the internet for a long time, and I should have printed it out, and I didn't. The the witnesses there said that he was still breathing when they pronounced him dead. And since when did they do they up executions? They always delay them. They never up them. This was the first time it was ever up, you know, the execution date. And, you know, too many firsts for me here, you know? Um, But anyway, he... You know, we know he didn't do the Oklahoma bombing anyway. He was just a patsy like uh, Oswald or whatever. But he was in special ops, too. So I think they took him and gave him a new ID and sent him to Australia. He could still be alive and, you know, moving around somewhere. You yeah, know? He, could be, he, he could be drinking a, a Darwin stubby as we speak, killing cane toads with a knife attached to a metal rod, for all we know. Yeah, could be. You know, either that, or when they get through with them too, though, they tend to knock them off. You know, when they don't need them anymore. Yeah, I mean, why would they, why would they keep him alive? Why would they even even take him to Australia? I mean, it, it just it just doesn't sound realistic to me. Um, uh, and you know, I'd, I'd have to see some some kind of evidence on that. 
I, I got this. Uh, well, I, I got this re- real kind of uh, 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 beef for for some reason now, Kathy, with um, saying things that you don't know for a fact and have looked at the documentation and stuff to to be real. But we all do it all all the time, don't we? And we, we can't we can't help ourselves. People are like a people are like a nice little rumor mill, don't you think, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Kathy, thank you very much for your call. Uh, and you have yourself a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Age. Thank <laughs> you. New Year. I'm not going to All right. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. We'll be right back after the break, ladies and gentlemen. 218 339 8525 is the number to the ring. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show, broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. This will be the last time you can hear me this year live. I think I will be taking a significant break, because Lord knows I need it. I have done so many interviews, made so many videos, broken so many records, been on so many other people's shows that I am just burnt out like a Christmas turkey that's been unattended for 16 hours in a hot oven. Oh, thank goodness it's going to be over soon. That's all I'll say. Talk radio can be really exhausting. (laughs) I put that lightly. And then occurs to me it's just like any other job by the end of the year you just want to <laughs> take your holidays as soon as possible but no matter how soon the holiday is it's never soon enough and no matter how long a holiday you take it's never long enough We're always going to be doing something i don't know I don't know how, what the what the what the issue was here with employment, self-employment or whatever. We've all got to somehow, in order to get ahead, really bust our asses at something uh, so that it, life is a struggle. You know, you have to work harder than you'd ever really want to in order to get ahead in this world. Most people don't want to do that. They just want to work the minimal amount and have a comfortable life so that they have uh, spare time on their hands to do things that they enjoy, you know, spend with their families or, or, or whatever. There's, there's, there's an element of awesomeness to that, I must say. Without stable families and uh, lives and things like that, society as we know it would kind of cease to exist. It would be pretty sad, wouldn't it? Got a caller on the line here. And it is in a 760 area code. Welcome to the show. I'd love your first name and perhaps the state you're calling from, if that's okay. My name is Mitch, and I'm calling from California. But you know me as your somewhat fabulous producer. Congratulations, Vinny, on a great season. Yeah, she has been a great season indeed. So I wanted to congratulate you and let you know that we now have for the Vinny Eastwood Show for 2013 an American phone number so people can call us any time, day or night. What is that phone number, Mitch? Are you ready? And so if anybody wants to make a donation to Vinny, if you want to sponsor the show, if you have a radio station you want to bring to American Freedom Radio, you can reach us at area code 760-330. Five three four one. That's seven six zero three three zero five three four one. I'm glad to see there's a thirty three in that number. Uh, we did that on purpose, Vinny. Of course, there are no coincidences. Hey, you know I've been seeing the number thirty three all over the place. You know, movies, tele- television, really? all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seriously, it's quite, it's quite funny. Um, you know, whenever there's a, a scene in a movie where somebody's embezzled something or uh, spent an inordinate amount of cash on a military piece of equipment, or perhaps it's a body count after some kind of terrorist event or something. It's 33 bodies. 
We spent $33 million on the uh, deficit of the military spending. We had uh, 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 $33,000 embezzled by this particular person. It's happening uh, quite often. And I even watched this movie called Street Kings with Keanu Reeves and uh, Forrest Whitaker. And he's coming up to this uh, apartment to see these two cop killers. And right on the lampshade, in full in uh, the focal point of the camera, as they're coming up, as they're ascending a staircase into a well-lit room, mind you, there is the all-seeing eye of the Illuminati on that lampshade, and, and all the lampshades in the entire apartment are completely identical on the wall, but only that one in the center of the f- on the of the focal frame had the all-seeing eye on it. And you know, wow. it, this stuff is not accidental. Every single episode of Family Guy that I have seen has a black and white Masonic floor on it. Every single one. Wow. It, you it's know what amazes me? What amazes me, Vinny, is that with each guest that you've had on the Vinny Eastwood show throughout 2012, how many of the stories are similar. You know what I mean? Like, Zen Gardner did a great job on your show yesterday. And he was talking about how everything is so compartmentalized. It really is. I think you can kind of detach it from everybody. I think if if people aren't playing a real role and they don't understand the importance of their role, they kind of slack off. And they're much more easy to control because they don't question or really care what they're being ordered to do. I I think that's probably why police have an upper limit on IQ on their tests. I'm not kidding about this, Mitch. One of my mates, um, uh, Gavin, he bought me some um, duty-free uh, liquor and cigar- cigarettes over from uh, Australia, and uh, I put him up on my couch for the night because, other than that, he would have had to stay in the fracking Australia, uh, uh, the uh, the Auckland airport for for the night, waiting nine hours to uh, catch a flight in the morning. Frack that! I said, bro, come and crash on my couch, and he took a policeman's exam once, and he said. <laughs> My IQ was too high. If they said, I'm sorry, you'd go crazy as a police officer. Go seek employment elsewhere. They don't want any intelligent wow. people enforcing BS laws, do they? Intelligent people question things. Yeah. Morons don't. Well, I'll tell you, of all the stories that have happened in 2012, I think that the one that has touched my heart the most in terms of being a father has been the militarization of local police departments across America. And every day I'm constantly receiving as your producer some video, some story of some American who's had their their civil rights violated. Uh, Most recently, these two women in their 20s are now filing uh, sexual assault charges against another woman officer who did a totally inappropriate um, cavity search on them on a public highway. Yep. I heard this real bad story one time. One of my uh, listeners, I think James in Brooklyn, his flatmate was freaking out for ages about the story. Some dude had been pulled over at a random checkpoint in Texas, and he'd refused to give him a blood sample. And so they arrested him, they took him back to the station, and they shoved a DNA sampler down the shaft of his penis and took a sample. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you, man. All right. And James's flatmate was so freaked out by this man. He was walking around. Oh, my God. They're going to shove a needle down my knob. Oh, God. You know, running around, arms flailing in the air, you know, just like out of the horror movies and things like that. And I said, okay, here's how you deal with this really horrific reality. Immediately, look inside your pants. All right. Now, is there anything untoward going on in there? No. Well, thank God. Thank God it wasn't yours. <laughs> oh, my God. So, so, well, so, it's, sometimes it's, you just kind of have to be reminded they, that at least it's not happening to me just yet. I don't have to freak out about it that much. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. It's like I call it the, the, uh, the American Fourth Reich Anxiety Report. And you've been such a blessing to my family and in my life, and I know, Vinny, to all your listeners, because you just keep us calm in a world that's going really freaking nuts right now, man. 
Yeah. Well, sometimes it's the... Uh, have you ever heard of the joke about the great cr- clown Poliarchi? No. Dude goes into a doctor's office, says he's depressed, that he's all alone in a world that seems dark and frightening and heartless. And the doctor says the remedy is simple. You must go see the great clown Poliarchi and he'll pick you up. And the man bursts into tears. He says, but doctor, I am Poliarchi. <laughs> God. Oh, man. See, that's how well, I feel it- like sometimes, man. I'm Polly Archie. <laughs> you know <laughs> make me is, laugh. Oh, you know how many times someone has called you on a Skype call or on the phone and they've had some incident or some personal thing in their life and they like basically apologize to you because then they realize that everything you've been saying for the last five years is actually happening. Yeah, I can't take credit for it though, bro. I'm just, you know what? I feel like sometimes I'm just mindlessly repeating what other people who I think have got more credibility than me have said. It just turns out that they were correct, luckily enough for me. No, I understand. I understand. But you have some really interesting insights. And I'll tell you, for someone who's 27, about to turn 28, you're really on to it, man. You you have, uh, you know, I consider you a truth or therapist because uh, you're kind of the place where everybody goes, where once they w- once they wake up, then it's like they want to go on the Vinnie Eastwood show. <laughs> so I don't know. Oh yeah, well I I do love having people on that have uh, you know had you know attempts on their lives or death threats or, or huge quantities of demonization in their lives and exposed the most horrific realities that have ever really been experienced by mankind and written books about the such. And to have them come on the show and get them laughing, I th- that that makes me feel really good. Yeah, it's a really good thing. You've had some guests on your show that I've never heard laugh until they came on your show. I, don't, I think I'm the only one whose objective is actually to get the host to laugh. I think everybody else's objective is to get more information out of them. But interestingly enough, because I'm trying to get them laugh, they try to bring out more information instead. <laughs> I understand. Has there been any story in 2012, Vinny, that has shocked you? Um, other than every story? It's uh, all... Is there any? Is there a particular story no, that really. came out this year? Not really. Mm-hmm. No, seriously. The world's all all one big kettle of horrific crap going on every single day. I can't be bothered filling my head full of that crap. Honestly. I understand. And, and well, you know, the, the years can... passed, and, and, and maybe maybe I'm selfishly, very selfishly, mind you, looking back on this year through my eyes only, and not thinking about the events that have happened around this planet, but instead just thinking about, you know, what my achievements have been, how much the audience has grown, uh, how many great new guests have come on the show. I think that's really sick. Wait, did... Did Gaddafi um, get assassinated? Was that this year? Um, was that this year who? or last year? I forget. But who was assassinated? Gaddafi. You know, Libya? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to say this year, earlier in the year. Yeah, they went You know, they went to Yemen. Now they're in Syria. They went to Libya. They, they destroyed one of the largest natural water reserves in the world has been taken out. Yeah, Libya. That 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 whole incident with Gaddafi. That that does um, strike a chord with me. We also had the New Zealand elections uh, earlier on this year, didn't we? And yeah, or, or, or that was that was last year, wasn't it? Uh, towards the end of last year, I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I well, I'll tell you the big as an American living in New Zealand, the biggest thing that shocked me is the way they are slamming through this Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, Vinny. It is unbelievable. Well, I was there with the police actually physically doing the slamming through of the TPPA. I understand. 
so that was the cool thing about having a gopro camera it was like uh adventure protesting you know wow and think the wow. camera's called a GoPro, right? And everybody's using it on snowboards. And I decided, hey, it would be a good idea to actually use this in protesting. And it looks so cool, man. And um, I wonder if we could, like contact GoPro and Sony and all of that kind of stuff and say, hey, can we do a, a website, goprotesting.com, where people doing their protesting with exactly. a GoPro camera, right? Eh? You know? A little marketing ploy. Hey, we yeah. could have... We could have arrested Vinnie Eastwood listeners in jail with their GoPro camera, you know, being, being, uh, being filmed. Yeah. Or, or have a, a shoulder-mounted one in the front of them, like when they're um, having all their stuff taken off them, their shoelaces, their necklaces, and their cell phones, and that kind of thing, when they're being fingerprinted, you know? It'll, it'll be like uh, that movie Requiem for a Dream, except you're exposing scumbaggery and getting and thrown in jail and having your, all your liberties taken acro- um, off you as a, re- as a direct result. You know what I'm excited about, Vinny? You're excited about everything in general, which I scarcely could guess. Well, I'm excited that now that it's December 22nd in New Zealand, which means it's December 21st in America, after today, I never want to talk to another New Ager again. Never again. (laughs) Yes. Uh, uh, but unfortunately they didn't all commit mass suicide as we'd hoped but so <laughs> they'll, they'll still be around somewhere <laughs> we'll be right back ladies and gentlemen after the break at the vinnieeastwoodshow.com much more somewhat fabulous producer thank you for your call we'll be right back folks oh, welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the Vinnie Eastwood Show broadcasting live on americanfreedomradio.com I don't think I'll really get another chance at this so Seeing as it's the last show of the year, me being the self-promotional acrobat I am, I want to encourage people to uh, subscribe, $5 a month, if you please, or if you're already subscribed for $5 a month, think about maybe upping it for to uh, $10 a month, maybe $20 a month, not that I'm not appreciative. Having more resources allows me to, to do more, get out to different places, uh, things of that nature, and uh, create more content. And sure enough, uh, as the uh, donations and subscriptions have been uh, rising, um, so have the uh, the sheer volume of radio shows and videos that have been edited and getting published on the Vinnie Eastwood show. I'm producing maybe four times as much content in 2012 per day than I was doing maybe in 2010 when I first began uh, this radio show. I've really really upped my fracking game here people and the only reason i'm able to do that in any way shape and form is because of the donations and the subscriptions ultimately this occasionally a product gets sold off the website and stuff like that but it's people just giving without any thought of return that is the real thing that backs this show it's the thing that pays these internet bills it's the thing that uh, gets gets me enough uh, gas money to go to protests and things of that nature it keeps me fed it keeps me alive so that i can keep trying to protect other life more or less that's my mission anyway so without further ado i've got a song for you me and my friend uh, mikhail is a good listener to the uh, show and a good friend of mine and we uh, we get together and we have jams and uh, create music together so we're going to play a song for you now this one's called it's uh, it's all coming down we're not professional musicians or anything like that. We just kind of sing and play and uh, do what we can with uh, whatever we've got. So I hope you enjoy this uh, little one here. Rats abandoned 
Coming to 
Hope you enjoyed that, ladies and gentlemen. You've been listening to the Vinnie Eastwood show for uh, years, some of you. And not all of you know that I'm, I'm also a bit of a musician. And kind of, um, Most of that song just came off the top of my head, and that, that's, how, that's how we do music, really. Just start singing and a song comes out. I don't know, it's kind of like, kind of like being in touch. Now... If anybody like that, um, what we really need is kind of like other musicians or other people who are better at kind of uh, technical issues and, and, and things of that nature. You know, other other singers who want who want to do the song instead. You know, it'd be cool. Have this idea called uh, digital busking, right? You do your original songs, you go out in the street, and you film yourself busking, and then you upload the video. And then you have a link to your PayPal account, and so that people can go to your uh, busking video and then chuck you a couple of bucks through the PayPal. Wouldn't that be cool? Be able to give musicians a little bit of a, a bit of a thing. I'm always thinking about some scheme or another. I don't know, don't know how however many of them accomplished them. <sighs> it's been a good year. Yeah, you know, my New Year's resolution was 2012. Time to stop fracking around. And believe you me, did I stop franking around. This has been probably the most productive year of my entire life. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much to all the guests who have come on and given us some of their knowledge and part of their uh, life's work for us to chew and mull over. And thank you to all you listeners who tune in all the time to give me your support uh, in in any way you can who join in the after the show chats thank you for being you thank you for being cool thank you for listening to American Freedom Radio and the com. words cannot express and I am a wordsmith how much indebtedness I feel I feel like a slave to you people a willing servant kind of slave and I can't wait to do it again. So next year, ladies and gentlemen, in 2013, we'll be coming back with all new shows, all new discussions, and a whole bunch of new things as well that I haven't even thought of yet. And I'll be doing that thinking, that planning, that uh, uh, scumbaggery machination over the holidays so I can deliver you a better show and a better me so that we can all have a better world. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you again sometime. No matter where you live, globalism affects you. Did you know that the Vinnie Eastwood Show has more subscribers than New Zealand Herald TV and is New Zealand's most popular YouTube news channel where warm-hearted humour and a list of awesome guests talk about crucial issues which the mainstream media ignore. A show where you, the listener, can phone up with questions, comments and suggestions of guests. Vinnie is building a hub connect truthers with raw information they need to become active. He can help you gain further skills such as website building, producing audio and video, and creating revenue streams in your own multimedia environment. Because Vinny supports such a wide range of people in the truth movement, he is not government or corporate backed and relies entirely on your donations. Give now, give generously, or subscribe for $10 a month for access to ad-free video archives. Just visit the vinnieeastwoodshow.com and click donate. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.com 
www.ghostbusinesscoach.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Vinnie Eastwood Show.com. Passed the legislation. And then they passed it, and the US dollar gets devalued 97% plus. And now, this Christmas Eve, just after this coming weekend, that 99 year lease is up for review. That's the 2012 thing that people should be concerned about. Another 100 year reign of the Federal Reserve? Now that's a scary proposition. You know, instead of getting some giant tsunami washing over you, you get a tsunami of debt. Of currency backed by nothing. Speaking of currency backed by nothing, I'm feeling kind of tired today. I've been working really hard all year. For the whole year. And uh, just exhausted and kind of run out of things to really say and do and talk about. So I would really appreciate it if you've been listening to the show at any at any real point. Just give us a call. 218-339-8525. Please, ring on in. I want to find out what uh, other people were doing on December 21st, 2012, or what they think about this massive PSYOP, and, and perhaps how it's been used as a cover to mask other things that are going on. And what I find interesting is the media was particularly silent about this. You know? Didn't see a whole lot of news stories floating around on mainstream media about December 21st, 2012, considering how close we've, we were coming up to it. You know, it was just not even mentioned. I, I, I didn't hear it once mentioned. I just completely ignored it. And, I th- and, and uh, in retrospect, for very good reason, because nothing's happening. OK, why would you report on something that isn't going to happen? Well... Maybe they just wanted to keep people in suspense. You know? Sit around, not knowing whether or not the world's going to end. One of the um, uh, listeners, Rob, was around here last night, twittering on his phone, looking, reading these forums at Godlike Productions, people saying that half the world is bathed in darkness. And I said, yeah, that's because it's a globe, and half of it has sun, and half of it has night at all times. You freaking... <laughs> Gonna be kidding me. People saying, "Oh, it's uh, it's six thirty a.m. here in Dublin, and the sun should have come up long time ago." You know, people are just making stuff up. Literally, this whole phenomenon has just been about a bunch of people making stuff up without knowing what they're talking about and making connections where there aren't none. And 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 and. <sighs> Fear paradigms. Here's the other thing. What I've deduced is that the New World Order is behind a lot of this. Okay? And and some of the other people that are commenting about the 2012 shift and, and, and all of that. I mean, I, I know that many of these people. They're like my friends, confidants, etc. But it doesn't change the fact that they're very, very wrong. Okay? I've been very, very wrong before. I admit it. 
everybody else has to start admitting it too. If you have ever, ever, ever started telling people that December 2012 is definitely going to be a consciousness shift or definitely going to be some kind of disaster and then here it is on the fracking day and you're going to like push back the time like you know what was happening last night on December 21st 2012 in New Zealand they're like oh it didn't happen in the morning okay so it must be happening at 11 o'clock or it, it didn't happen at 11 o'clock so it must be happening at at, uh, at at midnight US Eastern Standard Time or some shit you know they just keep pushing it back pushing it back like some priest who has foreside, who has prophesied that there's going to be a massive drought and a massive flood, and unless you give me all your gold and all your virgins and all your ears and trust to, in order to rule over you, you will be dead, okay? He's coming back to save us, and only I, the one with all the golden virgins, will be able to access it. This kind of rhetoric has been happening from, gosh dang, forever. People have always been trying to manipulate the fear process and paradigm. Always trying to make people look the other way while they're stealing stuff out of their pockets. I mean, just imagine the mass distraction that's, ha- that's happened. Mass distraction of all fracking kinds so unbelievably strong and ridiculous that it makes the mind real. Why? Have we got some kind of a sick fetish with the with the end of the world? How many zombie movies? How many disaster movies? How many alien invasion, blow up, transhumanist, post apocalyptic future movies do we do we need to see before we realise that we're getting sucked in by our fears and 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 our paradoxical reasoning that 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 looking at horrible things happening to other people somehow makes us feel better and entertained. You know, we're really obsessed with it. There's death everywhere. Everywhere. All all the media is soaked with it. If you're ever watching even entertainment, murder all over the place. News, murder all over the place. The radio with the same news and the same entertainment, murder all over the place. Maybe a music channel or something like that will we'll talk about, you know, macking wenches and, 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 and buying 22 inch rims for, for, your, for your giant Federal Reserve funded fracking Hummer that you can drive through a carbon tax regime checkpoint with. We'll be right back after the break at thefunnyacewoodshow.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. We're broadcasting live from New Zealand. It's about eight. Di- Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. It's the last show of the year that I'll be doing. I'll be going away on holiday for a couple of weeks to try and recharge the batteries so that we can come back and hit 2013 with all we got. Now, it is December 22nd in New Zealand today and December 21st in the United States, so it's not the end of the world. Come on! Imagine how many people have been caught up by this, you know, how many people are now uh, living in these tsunami-proof domes in some some, some beachside community with, with uh, uh, 75 years of dried food and medical supplies and things like holed up in the, in the mountains somewhere like living in fracking Hobbiton uh, you know what I was doing in preparation for 2012 I ensured that I had a bottle of liquor and that was about it because I knew that it, at most this 2012 phenomenon would last overnight and I'd want to not be terribly sober for it because of the massive letdown you know you either got people who are fancifully believing logical fallacies, believing that some alien race of, of uh, higher beings is somehow just going to turn up and save all our asses, or you got some other kind of logical fallacy believing people who think something else is going to happen and come up and destroy all our asses. I mean, it, stupid, man. You know, I'm going to just think back about how much time I have spent thinking about 2012, talking about 2012, reading about 2012, watching videos and movies and and things of this nature. Obsessing over it. All a waste of time. If you don't recognise what a PSYOP looks like 
And now I do. And hopefully I won't be caught by that kind of crap again. Did anybody else believe that they were actually going to die? You know? Anybody? Anybody at all? I could have... I must admit, there was a tiny little inkling in the back of my mind just going, you know, we might be all screwed here. But how is that different from any other day? It really isn't. Understand this. Caller lines are open. Um, not for me, though. For some reason, I can't seem to get it working. So on this last day, we would like to hear from people. <laughs> Nobody's giving me how to call in. And, and, and you know, um, what, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah, last night we had the uh, December 21st party here, you know, end of the world party, etc. You know, virtually nobody turned up. It's indicative, isn't it? You know, it's just me, a couple of listeners, uh, sitting around, talking, having a few drinks. I mean, it, that's the that's the amount of uh, people I expect. In fact, more people than I expected showed up. I didn't expect anybody to turn up because it's such a non-event. <laughs> and people, oh, because so many people, so many people over the years tell me all these things about this very special and wonderful day day that's go that is so sure to happen so sure to happen that they're willing to change their entire life course because of something else somebody else said that i never checked up on really you know we had uh Jan Irvin on the dark occulted mysticism show last night and he has uh deduced uh, from talking to people who've actually studied the real Mayan calendar and all of its predictions and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, there was actually only one prediction in there at all. One thing was uh, uh, certain predicted by the Mayans, and that was the, the crowning of a new king of some kind. That's it. No tsunamis, no volcanoes, no earthquakes, no global war. And the reason why the Mayan calendar is in a circle is because it keeps going after it reaches a certain point. This is simply the renewal. We're going into the, um, the, the exact same repetitive phase of some kind of celestial events, you know? And, and it'll surely line up with all the moon alignments and everything like that. It's just mathematically perfected. So, worst thing that can happen. I mean, I mean look at it this way. You got a theory here. You got a circle, and it, and it rolls like a tire. So, does somehow the universe change if a tire rotates three hundred and sixty degrees, or does it just keep rolling as you as you're going down the freeway? It just keeps rolling. I don't understand why people's ignorance has has, has been uh, uh, kept up by this. Believe me, when I tell you. That anybody who's saying that something is going to happen, and it's a uh, it's a natural event or, or or something of that nature, and they don't produce like real documented evidence to it, like if it's it does this, like, for example, how many times have you heard uh, different numbers for how long this rotational cycle of the Mayan calendar takes? On the movie 2012, it said 640,000 years. Uh, David Wilcock, I think he said 65 million years. Or uh, I had some people last night say it was 13,000 years. Another person say it was like uh, 3,500 years. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. If you don't really know, then it ain't really going to happen. The problem is people will just keep believing in this date type thing until the date arrives and then passes without incident before they start believing otherwise. It's still in the back of their mind just going, mm, oh, it might end, it might end. Like my, my sister Janine, for example, she uh, refused, absolutely refused to pay her credit cards off, and to, uh, uh, start paying her credit cards off until December 21st, 2012. <laughs> Or, or uh, other people might be, I don't know, quitting smoking or, or whatever. It's, it's just basically a day like any other day, you know? New Year's Eve or, or Easter or Christmas or, or Thanksgiving. 
these are only really any other days. What, what matters is the way people treat them. And you know what I saw when I was looking over the city last night from the, from the driveway and, and all this kind of stuff, looking for things over the thing. I mean, we heard a succession number of loud bangs in the air, probably fireworks of some kind. Somebody let off maybe, I don't know, I think maybe 10 fireworks? Just bang, 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 and then it was over? Right? This is the massive fanfare. This is the uh, uh, huge consciousness shift. Nothing's changed. Nothing. I got up on 21st of December 2012 here in New Zealand. Oh, it's overcast. It's a mild temperature and there's a slight breeze blowing. Doesn't sound like the end of the fracking world to me. This is just insane. I don't know. Why am I even keeping on talking about it? You know, to be honest, how big an industry has been brought up around this 2012 phenomenon? And I, I'm, I've, I think I've got a couple of DVDs and books on my shelf there um, uh, from people with just this topic material. You know, just this 2012 consciousness shift, earth changes, yada, yada. All right, and they're all 100% wrong. Okay? You know, I know, because it's December 21st and nothing they said would happen has happened. So suddenly none of these people have any credibility whatsoever. I've maintained for a long time that it was just a big fat psyop. You know, barely even worth paying attention to. And and, and time has proven to be correct. What people don't talk about is the other things that are going on, the things in reality. Um, oh, well, uh, no, 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 I can't say that. If, have, you, have you noticed so many people so many people with radio shows and blogs and YouTube channels make this claim. Nobody else talks about this. L like, as if they've talked to everybody to make sure that they're not talking about it <coughs> first before making such a claim. <laughs> no. Heaps of people have been talking about this. The uh, Federal Reserve, 99 years ago, roughly out by a few days or so. The Federal Reserve Act in 1913 was passed on Christmas Eve when very few people who were elected were actually in that house to 